We're going to continue with our discussion on resistance um, and now talk about Ohm's law. Let's start out with a resistor that has some resistance value R. If a voltage is applied to that resistor, we know that a current is going to flow. Now, let's just remind ourselves very briefly, Benjamin Franklin assumed that it was positive charge that was flowing, and we continue on throughout all of electrical engineering, really, using that misconception, but it's so legacy-bound that all of our calculations are going to be along the idea that this current I is going to, in a resistor, is going to flow from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Thus, we've referenced the direction of current going from the positive reference terminal to the negative reference terminal in this resistor. Ohm's law, by the way, Ohm was a German mathematician and physicist who lived from the mid-1700s to the mid-1800s. Ohm's law gives us the relationship between current and voltage in a resistor, and it is V equals I times R. We can rearrange it, and we can come up with I equals V over R. And we can also think in terms of R being defined as the ratio of voltage to current. Now, in this form right here, we see a very nice linear relationship between voltage and current. Not all devices are linear in voltage and current. But the resistors that we're going to be talking about typically, in at least in this class, will be linear resistors. And by linear, we mean that if you plot current along this axis and V along this axis, and varying voltages or varying currents in measuring the voltage, you'll find that it plots to give you a nice straight line where the slope of the line is equal to the resistance. Just a little bit of uh, some naming conventions here for a second regarding voltages. If we have a resistor, and let's just say that it's maybe connected in a circuit with a number of resistors, and let's just say that this point right here is point A in our circuit, and here is point B, and we have some point in the circuit that we've defined as our reference, ground, call it here, then V sub A will be the voltage at A relative to our reference, and V sub B will be the voltage at B relative to our reference, and we can define a voltage referenced plus to minus, we'll call it V A B, where the subscript A of this voltage, which is the voltage across this resistor, the first subscript letter refers to the point in the circuit where we have the positive reference. The second point, or the second um, letter of the subscript, refers to the point in the circuit where the voltage has its negative reference. So in this case, then, V, the voltage across this resistor, call it V, would equal, I'm sorry, call it VAB, would equal V sub A minus V sub B. If this resistor, again, had a value of R, then we could also say that the current flowing through this resistor, once again defined flowing from the higher terminal, or the higher reference voltage to the lower reference voltage, I would equal V sub A minus V sub B, that's just the voltage across it, divided by R. Okay? All righty. Just to review here, and let's do a couple of quick cal calculations here. What is power defined as? Power is defined from our previous discussion as I being equal to I times V. Now, with Ohm's law, when we're talking about the power associated with a resistor, we know that V 
is equal to I times R. Taking this expression for power and substituting in Ohm's law for V, we get then that P is equal to I times I times V, which is equal to then I squared times R. Frequently in the electrical engineering world, you'll hear people referring to the power associated with the resistive load or resistive losses as the I squared R power. Now there's one other way of representing this power e expression. We can rearrange this again so that we have I is equal to V over R and now substituting in this expression for I into our power formula and we get then that P is equal to, I is replaced with V over R, times V, and we get then the power is equal to V squared over R. So we now, for a resistor, we now have three different formulas, or three, di three different expressions for the power. You've got P equals I times V, you've got P equals I squared times R, and you've got P equals V squared over R. Which one do you use? Well, it depends on what you know. If you know the current and the voltage, you can simply calculate the power as always by multiplying the current times the voltage. If you know the current and the resistance, you'll use this one. If you know the voltage and the resistance, you use this one. And of course, you can always calculate whatever you don't have using Ohm's law. Alrighty, let's just do a couple of examples real fast. Let's assume that we have a 9 volt battery. and we're going to connect it to a 30 ohm resistor. So this is 9 volts and here we have R equaling 30 ohms. Alrighty, physics tells us that if you have a voltage you're going to have current flowing. Ah, if you have a voltage connected through a closed circuit you're going to have current flowing. Because it's a resistive load, Ohm's law tells us that V equals I times R. So what is the current that's flowing? Well, I is going to equal V over R, which will equal the voltage of 9 volts divided by 30 ohms. That is equal to 0.3 amps. All righty. How much power is being delivered to that resistor? we have three different equations that we can use. We now know the power, or we now know the current flowing through here. I should have pointed out, let's just be explicit here. The voltage across this resistor is, in fact, 9 volts. This point right here, this voltage plane, is all tied to the negative terminal of our power supply. And so by default, We've defined that as being our reference of zero volts, and this plane up here is nine volts above that plane, so sure enough, the voltage across that resistor is nine volts. All righty, so what's the power being delivered to that resistor? Well, we know the power is equal to I times V, which is equal to, we now know I is 0.3 amps times nine volts, that's 2.7. What are the units of power? watts. We can also say that P is equal to I squared times R. Well, we know I to be 0.3 amps, squaring that times R of 30 ohms. 0.3 squared is 0 0.09 times 30 is once again 2.7 watts. And we can also say that that's equal to V squared over R, which is equal to V being 9 volts squared divided by 30, well 9 squared is 81, divided by 30 is once again 2.7 watts. One more example. Let's assume now that we have an AC voltage source. Let's assume that it's the kind of voltage that you get when you stick something in the outlet of the wall, 120 volts here in the United States, and we're going to drive a light bulb, a 60 watt incandescent light bulb to begin with. Now let's just model it as a resistor. And we know that current is going to flow. 
We don't know what the resistance of this re- of this light bulb is, the, the effective resistance is. All we know is that it's a 60 watt light globe. First of all, let's determine what current is going to flow through that. What do we have? Well, we know that V equals 120 volts. And 60 watts, what's watts? Watts are the units of power, so we know then that power is equal to 60 watts. And we know that I is equal to, well, we know that P, power, is equal to I times V, so I is equal to P over V, which is in this case equal to 60 divided by 120, or 60 divided by 120 is 0.5 amps. That one 60-watt incandescent light globe is going to draw about a half an amp. Now, just for fun, let's say we're wiring our house and we're doing our lighting circuits on 15-amp circuit breakers. All righty. How many of these 60-watt light bulbs can we put onto one 15-amp circuit? Let's disregard the... the uh, safety factors and, and some of the practical applications. Is let's just get some ideas to how many incandescent light bulbs can you put on a 15 amp circuit breaker. Well, if it pulls 0.5 amps for one light, then two lights is going to pull one amp. So if we've got 15 amps, we can do 15 times 2, we can do 30 light bulbs. Or we'd say then, if we've got 15 amps to work with, and divide that by 0.5 amps per light bulb. 15 amps to work with divided by 0.5 amps per light. Dividing that gives us then 15 divided by 0.5 is 30 bulbs. Alrighty, now. What if instead of using those old fashioned incandescent light globes that get so hot, what if instead of that we were to use a new high efficiency 6 watt LED bulb that gives off approximately the same amount of light as a 60 watt bulb? How much current does that draw? Well, once again, we know that P is equal to I times V, so in this case, once again, I is equal to P over V. Now, P is just 6 watts, or one-tenth of the power demand to get the same amount of light in an LED bulb divided by 120 well 60 divided by 120 was a half so 6 divided by 120 is going to be 0 0.05 amps for the same voltage applied if we cut the power consumption by a factor of 10 in other words it's one tenth the power will have one tenth of the LED, or one-tenth as much current being driven to the LED. Now let's just go back up here to this uh, incandescent light globe and calculate the equivalent resistance there. Well, what would resistance be for this light globe? R is equal to what? It's the ratio of V over I, which would be 120 divided by 0.5 that sounds like about 240 ohms for the equivalent resistance of a 60 watt incandescent light globe. What would it be down here? Well, the resistance, the equivalent resistance for this LED would once again be V over I, which would be 120 divided, divided by 0 0.05 which would be 2,400 ohms. All righty, one final comment here. We know that resistance is equal to the voltage, the ratio of the voltage to the current. That is what we refer to as resistance. It's a measure of how much the electricity is resisted. There is another quantity known as conductance, and it is defined as current over voltage, 
That's conductance. And conductance is then G is simply equal to 1 over R. We'll see as we go through the semester that sometimes it's more convenient to think in terms of conductance. But generally speaking, we'll be working with resistances.